every era had their way with justice and they had their own ways of punishing the criminal. In this video, we're going to look at some of the most brutal punishments done in the Victorian era. Number 1. Public Flogging Flogging, also known as whipping or caning, refers to a form of punishment involving blows with a whip or rod, typically directed at the person's back. This was a judicial punishment to maintain discipline in all social settings. It includes schools, prisons, military forces, and even homes. In other contexts, the lash has been extensively utilized, often with a deliberate intent to inflict pain, such as with the notorious Cat -O Nine Tails. This implement typically consisted of nine knotted cords and thongs of raw hide attached to a handle. The Russian knout, on the other hand, was an even more agonizing and lethal weapon. Consisting of dried and hardened thongs of rawhide interwoven with wire, with the wires often being hooked and sharpened to tear the flesh. Number 2. Pillory The pillory was a form of corporal punishment where a wooden post and frame was mounted on a raised platform. Positioned several feet above the ground, the pillar featured some holes in the frame where the offender's head and hands, and sometimes feet and the stocks, were locked in and trapped. The pillory gradually fell out of use in England, except for perjury and subordination, and was officially abolished in 1816. On June 22, 1830, Peter James Bossy became the last person to stand in the pillory at the Old Bailey for perjury, marking the final instance of its use. In France, a similar device called the Carcan was used until 1832, while in Germany it was known as the Pranger. The pillory was also employed in the American colonies and it was used and its use was allowed under U.S. federal statutes until 1839. Delaware was the last state to abolish the pillory in the United States, doing so in 1905. Number 3. Hanging and Public Executions Hanging is a method of execution that involves strangling or breaking the neck of a person using a suspended noose. Their traditional approach includes hanging victims from a gallows or crossbeam until they suffocate. Another common method is having the condemned individual stand on a trapdoor, which opens, causing them to fall and stop abruptly due to the rope around their neck. This sudden jerk is believed to break the neck vertebrae, leading to immediate loss of consciousness. The noose is typically designed with a knot or metal eyelet, known as the hangman's knot, to facilitate the sharp backward movement of the victim's head, aiding in neck fracture. Hanging originated from ancient Roman law and was adopted by the Anglo-Saxons from their Germanic ancestors. By the 12th century, it became the prescribed punishment for homicide in England, eventually becoming the primary method of capital punishment for felony convictions until its abolition in 1965. Public hangings in England continued until 1868, when they were relocated to prisons. Number 4. Trial Labor and Workhouse Conditions The Victorian era was marked by the widespread and disturbing exploitation of children in labor-intensive industries. These young individuals, some as young as five years old, endured appalling working conditions and faced numerous hardships in factories and workhouses. Children were subjected to grueling tasks and intense physical labor, which were tough even for adults. They toiled for long hours, often far exceeding what their tender age and developing bodies could endure. The work they did was often repetitive, lacking any consideration for their well-being or educational needs. Instead of experiencing the joys of childhood, these young individuals were thrust into an adult world of hardship and suffering. But it wasn't just the harsh working conditions, but there was physical abuse as well. Children faced the cruel treatment of their employers who showed little regard for their welfare. There was no consideration at all. They were subjected to verbal and physical mistreatment, including beatings. Such abuse created an environment of fear and intimidation. The factories and workhouses back then themselves were grim and dehumanizing environments. Crowded and unsanitary, they provided little respite for the exhausted and overworked children. The air was often thick with dust and harmful particles posing a serious threat to their health. Many children suffered from respiratory ailments and other illnesses as a result of their prolonged exposure to hazardous working conditions. The plight of these child laborers were largely overlooked and dismissed by society. There was a prevailing belief that children were expendable commodities, seen as mere sources of cheap labor rather than deserving individuals with rights and needs. It was not until later reforms that significant steps were taken to address the issue of child labor and improve the conditions under which children worked. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. If you like this video, don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe for more interesting ways people punished the criminals back in the day.